Hello. This may be a blog. I'm, I know I said I don't do blogs, but this, I think, deserves it. The Hong Kong elections recently, because I think Hong Kong needs to be talked about again. A lot of change in Hong Kong for the better. And that's the thing. Media reports about Hong Kong have been distorted as of late, and especially with regards to the recent election. I'm not going to do an expose like others because I'm very short on time, but I want to start just do a brief talk about John Lee and what I collected by information about him. But I'll first start with this song. I know the full thing because it's at least a minute or two longer, so that's besides the point. I'm not going to have everyone bought it by a four minute song. Okay, this song was released in 2020 by the Hong Kong police itself. It's got some, it has some really interesting lyrics in it, which I think should be taken into account. From the beginning, I knew that I had to go through the storm. We will be brave and self-improvement upheld with law be tolerant of death not af- not afraid to rush in the de- case of danger even in the wind and waves rush wet with blood and sweat law enforcement and road chief high allow high and loud fighting spirits look at the police badge your your heart is bright 
No concessions, loyalty, courage, and ambition. Facing challenges and, and injuries, courage does not diminish desire. Law enforcement does, has not been forgotten. Punish traitors and take legal action. Never forget the pledge to use my strength. Be a real hero, love Hong Kong. Defend Hong Kong. Of course, that's not in, that, in the exact order of lyrics, but that doesn't have to be. <clears throat> the, the reason I'm saying that is because of the next thing I'm about to show you, which is, where was it? Sorry about that. <laughs> Give me two seconds. Being all silent. Yeah, I think on now. This one. Some parts in this article here, I'll just go for Now you can use it afterwards freely, so it's fine. Uh, this, it said it's later down, later down, there's an interesting point in which I think is often not forgotten by people. Hong Kong doesn't have a military, does, it is a weak point. In theory, People's Liberation Army provides military defence, but leaders in both Hong Kong and the mainland China does not choose to use them, showing a um, unexpected level of patience. For that reason, attacking showing the Hong Kong police legacy became an imperative once such an important pillar starts to crumble. The others will be weakened and the whole structure will fall. Hong Kong will descend into chaos or, or so the powers behind the scenes hope. Thus, there's a strategy to, to demonize and de de dehumanize the police force when the protest started. Activists had one demand of abolishment of the extradition bill. However, that was quickly achieved. But the protest continued with the infamous five demands, not one less chant. What does. Yeah. The reason I'm saying this is because Hong Kong suffered a lot through the 2019-2020 period. I mean, it's really hard to put into words what it went through. I'm sure everyone knows Kerry Lam's position beforehand. Okay. In the opening ceremony, John Lee said, it is my greatest. It is the greatest honor for me today to show that that this permission given to me by the central authorities and people of Hong Kong, I know well the responsibility that comes with it. Other media relating to John Lee was spotting the desire of cooperation in mainland. The Hong Kong SAR chief executive John Lee met with vice president of the publicity department of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, and a China media group. President and Chief and his colleagues at the Government House on new, Friday noon. To celebrate the 25th anniversary of Sessions Hong Kong SCR, CGT and Documentary and Radio, the Greater Bay under the CMG was, was officially launched on July 1st. Lee expressed his gratitude to CMG for his com for, for its comprehensive reports on development of Hong Kong and the first aspects aligned from mainland patriots to know about the Hong Kong SCR. Noting that the next five years will be a critical moment for Hong Kong to forge ahead from governance towards development and stability. She's being said in the inauguration ceremony itself. A letter of sense of sincere greetings to all people of Hong Kong. I also extend warm congratulations to the newly in inaugurated six term HESCA to Executive Mr. Zhong Li principal officials of the sixth Hong Kong government and members of the executive council. And let me express heart warmth, heartfelt appreciation to all, all, all our compatriots, both at home and abroad. And international friends make their support for one country, two systems and for Hong Kong prosperity and stability. Hong Kong's return to the motherland marked the beginning of a new era for the reason over the past 20 years, with full support of the country and a joint effort by the Hong Kong HESCA government and people from all walks of life in Hong Kong. 
The law of the People's Republic of China on safeguarding national security in Hong Kong in the Hong Kong SAR was adopted, which has established the legal system to safeguard national security in the region. The, the electoral system of Hong Kong has been modified and improved. Therefore, we realize in the principle of that Hong Kong should be admitted and missed by patriots. The, the democratic system of the Huskar conforms to the one country, two systems principle and the region's constitutional status. It is in the interest of Hong Kong residents, democratic rights, and the region's prosperity and stability to secure a bright future for the region. There's three quotes John Lee said um, from 2019 to 2021, which I think is quite interesting. And yes, before some people say, yes, they're outdated, I understand that, but that doesn't matter. The violent riots taking place in Hong Kong since July, July, June 2019, which had, more, which, which had more profound consequences of ruining people's law abidingness and breeding home, homegrown terrorism. John Lee, July 3rd, 2021. Professional media workers should recognize that those that these are the bad apples who are abusing the position of by simply wearing a false coat of media worker and will pollute press freedom. That was talking about Apple Daily. Um, John Lee, that was 2019. If, if you are generally interested in press freedom, you should support actions against people who have, who have un, unlawfully exploited the media as a tool to pursue their political or personal gains. Uh, Xi, Xi Jinping said on May 31st, 2022, regarding Sean Lee, she congratulated Lee, sorry, I can't speak for a second there, sorry, Lee on his election win and appointment by, by the central government. Um, President Lee for maintaining the unwavering stance of loving the country and the Huskar, being willing to assume responsibility and actively perform his duties. She said, Lee has made contributions to safeguard national security in Hong Kong's prosperity and stability in various roles. Central authorities give him, give him full affirmation and, and you have full trust and have full trust in you. And he's saying, despite changes over 25 years, the practice of one country, two, one country, two systems in Hong Kong has been a sound success, she said. Uh, the, the central authorities, resolved to fully and faithfully implement the principle of one country two systems that has never been wavered st less still less has will it change thanks to the concerted efforts of central government the Huskar government and the whole society hong kong has achieved major transformation from chaos and order and is now at a crucial stage of advancing to prosperity she noted But the issue, funny thing is, that's so, so, so what it says is under John Lee, uh, it seems that there could be a good syn synchronization between the futures of the, both the mainland and Hong Kong in terms of governance, which is interesting. And of course, there's Western media, there's the American ABC on the April 29th, 2022. Um, as part of national improving governance, Lee said he would fulfill the constitutional responsibility of, of legislation under Article 23 of Hong Kong Main Constitution. I'm, I'm just going to assume everyone knows what Article 23 is. I'm pretty sure. If you, if you don't know, you can just look it up yourself on the Hong Kong Basic Law. It's easy to find. Next. Any ex guy news? With, with pro protesting views, many pro democracy activists has raised concerns over what his leadership will mean for the movement uh, and the future for the former former British colony. Uh, the thing interesting part is they, they still refer to it as a former British colony, even though it's 25 years since, not as the Huskar. And to clarify, when I say Huskar, Huskar is just easier to say than Hong Kong special administrative region every single time. 
Promise you me then Pride Moxie activist Nathan Law has uh, has met Miss Lee and described him as a as authoritarian and more hawkish than Mrs. Lamb. The 28-year-old campaigner who was wanted on several charges in China and Hong Kong and is living in, as, as a political refugee in, in the UK, told Sky News, Mr. Lee is notoriously difficult to deal with. He was very, very he was very authoritarian person who felt who feels like as long as he has power, he doesn't have to explain things or be held account, he said. And this is a funny thing. <clears throat> Nathan Law is now being used as a puppet to actually undermine his own people. Now, the final thing I found really interesting is the EU. The EU seemed to chime in on this election as well by saying the European Union attacks great importance to the preservation of Hong Kong's high degree of autonomy as well as respect for, for human rights and from freedoms, including media, press freedom, me, sorry, media freedom, democratic principles, and rule of law in line with basic law with international commitments. The EU calls on Chinese and Hong Kong authorities to abide by their national and international commitments, notably the ultimate aims of electing the chief executive members of the Legislative Council by universal suffrage. This is actually interesting is because if they actually looked into what was happening about that, there could have been a few years ago, universal suffrage. And there was a lot, it was fine to go ahead except for the pro the democratic party and like those that block which was like anti-establishment in which because it was, it was used to say about requirements that would be updated as well because it wasn't just going to be a quick same system monopoly stuff with just you know suffrage it would have had like more commitments to it and more leeway accountabilities and so on and so on. And it was actually ultimately the ones who were anti establishment that actually just blocked it and destroyed it. Let's not forget that. There's a divide how it is reported. John Lee, I see having a challenge in a renew, with, with renewed hostility from, well, from the conventional Western media. Caroline was seen as an, as an incompetent puppet by Western media. John Lee is seen as an authoritarian puppet of China. Only the people of Hong Kong and China can determine the fate of Hong Kong. And that's basically what my core point here is. <laughs> Hong Kong needs to determine itself, needs to figure out what it needs to, what it needs to do. Hong Kong isn't a con anymore. That's what you need to understand. The only people that matter regarding the future of Hong Kong is Hong Kong and China. Hong Kong and China are then the only ones in which can have any real say about it in terms of governance in, the, in any real manner. Of course, when I say that, the international, international countries can come in and trade there. Sure, they can have some say if it's valid, but it's not really a case of necessarily... Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, that. Okay, back now, back now. I was, I was playing that one. <clears throat> okay, back. As I say, Hong Kong itself has go through, has, has already gone through a lot. Hong Kong then in turn needs to build its own path with China. You can't be all then like, let's just separate China from Hong Kong, Hong Kong from China or other parts of China from China. That's just like, Stupid. That doesn't help anything. That doesn't help people from Kong. It doesn't help that. It's much like the sanctions against Xinjiang um, by the US, in which will only hurt normal Xinjiang people. It's foolish. So that's why we want this message to be here. 
if you want to understand this and Hong Kong, maybe, and that's and, and that's also something I think needs to be said. I don't feel John Lee will be treated well by Western media. He probably will be treated as, as a hostile enemy, probably most likely. And that doesn't mean he is an enemy to Hong Kong itself necessarily. Well, I don't know ever think about him. By his track record, I can tell he cares a lot more than others who spoke about Hong Kong frequently. And I'll and with that, I'll leave it. And it's just a little thought thing. Don't be stupid about Hong Kong, especially post NSL, because if you are, that's on you. There's there's been enough time to read up on everything, more enough time to try and talk to people, more enough time for everything else. And always be transparent and seek the truth. <laughs>